Each year, scientists, researchers, and everyday people make incredible discoveries, helping us to better understand the world around us. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at interesting discoveries. An Intriguing Large Hadron Collider Discovery Particle physicists around the world are intrigued with the latest data from the Large Hadron Collider Beauty, known as LHCB detector, which introduced evidence as an unknown discrepancy between electron and muon behavior. This detector monitors proton-proton collisions as well as the rare decay of B mesons, which are particles containing beauty quarks. The experiment has discovered a difference in the rate of decline in muons compared with the one to electrons. Rare decays are a unique method that particle physicists use to find heavy particles. They do not just hurl protons at each other and look for new particles in the aftermath. Instead, it focuses on the minute variations in every event. The rare decays can hint at the existence of unknown particles, which the researchers can piece together after many experiments. The standard model theory explains that leptons, like muons and electrons, are identical in the forces they obey, except for their mass. It is expected that the B mesons decay at the exact same rate to muons as they do to electrons. However, the LHCB calculates that it seems to decay 15% less often to muons than to electrons. Physicists are excited for this new model to be confirmed in experiments since it will prove there is more to lepton treatments than only the standard model. Over the years, there have been various discrepancies found between electrons and muons within experiments like LHCB, although none of them panned out. After more data was collected and investigated, the differences disappeared, and the standard model was once again the leading theory. Physicists have been trying to prove their theories that leptons have more differences than just their mass, but have been unsuccessful so far. These new findings are significant and can potentially provide the proof needed to beat the reigning theory finally. The evidence has statistical importance of 3.1 sigma, which means that the statistical fluctuations meet the minimum requirements for new physics. However, it should be noted that the 5 sigma is the ideal standard to prove a discovery in new particle physics. Since there have been many discrepancies, physicists are excited to find concrete evidence of this decay rate difference among electrons and muons. They believe there could be some truth to the pattern. There are still many theoretical uncertainties that the researchers need to consider, especially when comparing their results against the baseline standard model. Theoreticians have been eagerly updating their proposed models since the results of the LHCB's experiments were announced. This discrepancy will need much more research and data before anyone accepts this new particle and model. The LHCB is currently down for maintenance and will return next year with upgraded hardware and detectors. There are other experiments in Japan and Illinois, USA, which can help corroborate this rising theory and shed some light on the differences between muons and electrons. However, physicists are trying not to raise their hopes or hype it too much, just in case it is another fluctuation. Creepy artificial intelligence created portrait that fetches $432,500 at auction. In October 2018, a major auction house sold a portrait that they estimated for as little as $7,000. It ended up selling at $432,500. The signature on the lower right-hand side was a small section of the code that was used to create the piece of art. The equation was written by a collective known as Obvious Art. 15,000 portraits were fed into the system between the 14th to the 20th century. The product is what some might describe as distressing, a portrait known as Edmund de Bellamy, an entirely imaginary man from a completely fictitious family. The whole familial line is painted in the old master style a la Rembrandt, with distorted features and unusually blurry faces. The generator makes new paintings based on the data it is fed, and the discriminator then tries to decipher whether or not a given painting is real or fake. 
The less certain that the discriminator is about an artificial painting, the more likely it is to look authentic. This is not the first example of artificial intelligence artists testing the limits and possibilities of computer-generated creativity. In fact, a section of the code sparked a bit of controversy because it was borrowed from another AI artist, Robbie Barrett. The 19-year-old code was shared under an open-source license, so the parameters of ownership are unclear. The highest bidder on this piece was a phone buyer who wished to be kept anonymous. They were one of five parties who were bidding on the work. While the signature at the bottom refers to the generative adversarial network itself, the actual authorship is up for debate. Is this the product of a computer, the men who programmed it, or the influences it was fed? The Fukushima plant is still leaking poison after a decade. It all started with an earthquake that hit around the Fukushima region. This lasted for about three to six minutes. The earthquake totally disrupted the infrastructure of the region, including electricity, gas, water and railway. This earthquake was so severe that the region shifted on its axis, moving towards the east. In less than an hour, this triggered a tsunami, the first of many tsunamis in the country's northern shores. According to reports, the waves were as high as 90 to 100 feet in some areas, topping the protective seawalls and going as far as six miles to the town of Sendai. This quick succession of events left very little time for residents to evacuate the location. Villages were hit with water that was carrying tons of debris. During the emergency, each of the three operational nuclear reactors at the Fukushima plant shut down successfully but the backup power and cooling system failed because the power transmission tower was toppled by the earthquake. The fuel rods partially melted down due to the residual heat caused by the lack of backup power. Following the loss of external electricity supply, the emergency backup diesel generators started successfully. But just less than an hour after the earthquake, the tsunami hit the plant with a wave that was up to 14 to 15 meters in height. Since the emergency backup generators were located underground, they were flooded with seawater. The electrical equipment, such as pumps and fuel tanks, were either washed away or damaged. As a result of this, the plant suffered a total loss of electrical power and experienced a station blackout. As people were being evacuated and as the nation lurched from the earthquake and the ensuing tsunami, the nuclear disaster extended over the course of the next few days. Reactor 1 and Reactor 3 exploded on the 12th and 14th of March, respectively, causing the government to evacuate everyone within a 20-kilometer radius. On the 15th of March, another explosion in the building where Reactor 2 was kept released even more radiation. The plant also suffered a number of chemical explosions which badly ruined the buildings. Radioactive materials began to leak into the atmosphere and the Pacific Ocean. Thousands of people had to leave their homes, while workers used water cannons and sea pumps to try and cool the overheating facility. The full effect of this incident became apparent over the following months, with the government eventually evacuating all residents within a 30-kilometer radius of the plant. In the end, a disaster that might have been worse was only escaped through the drowning of the reactors by making use of the water sprayed on top of the buildings by fire trucks to prevent the nuclear cores from turning into unstoppable chain reactions. After 10 years, the injection of water continues. The ripple effects of this catastrophic event still continue after a decade with several implications. More than 19,000 people were killed and over 465,000 were evacuated. The damages also cost the Japanese national economy hundreds of billions of dollars. It was estimated that the cleanup may take up to 2051. Around 150,000 people living close to the damaged reactors had to be evacuated due to the threat of radioactivity. This in itself definitely caused mental strains and evacuation-related deaths, according to reports. Still to this day, the planet is leaking radioactive material. The most recent announcement is that Japanese officials plan to release over 1 million tons of radioactive water into the ocean. Health Consequences of Fukushima 
The direct health effects of the radiation were relatively controlled considering how severe the event was, not only among the emergency workers but also the residents. Other serious health consequences of this event include deaths during the evacuation process, increased mortality among displaced elderly people, and the collapse of the radiation emergency system. In a mental health survey, it was disclosed that the Fukushima accident led to severe psychological distress among the residents from the evacuation zones. There were also lifestyle-related problems such as increase in proportion of overweight individuals, an increase in prevalence of hypertension and changes in health-related behaviours among the evacuees, all of which may lead to increased cardiovascular disease in the future. These health effects, which were much more significant than the physical effects, have not been properly addressed as general health risks. The inpatients and the elderly residents of nursing facilities were quickly evacuated by buses shortly after the accident. The evacuees were not accompanied by any medical personnel and they were laid down on the seats of the jam-packed buses with full protective suits on. No form of medical care, not even food was provided for several hours during the evacuation process. As a result of this, scores of patients died in an evacuation that was supposedly intended to minimize exposure to radiation. The life-threatening risk faced by these people was not the radiation, but discontinuation of daily medical care. The lack of medical support before, during and after the evacuation process was regarded as the major cause of loss of life during the evacuation. The establishment of a restricted zone forced a large number of the residents out of the area, where they had to stay in temporary shelters or other places for long periods of time. The life conditions in shelters led to several types of health issues, such as outbreaks of communicable disease and mental stress. Also, sudden changes in lifestyle in foreign places may result in behavioural problems as a result of poor adaptation to new circumstances. Prehistoric monument in Golan Heights fuels mystery. In the Middle Eastern territory of Golan Heights lies a mystery that is easy to miss, a prehistoric circular monument in the middle of a field. During a 1967 survey, archaeologists uncovered a structure that they believe to be one of the oldest and largest in the region. In Arabic, the monument is called Qum el Hiri, which means the stone heap of the wild cat. For centuries it evaded discovery, as it could not be seen from the ground, and it is only thanks to aerial surveillance that we now know it exists. Since then, excavations have determined that it is one of the oldest and largest archaeological formations in the region. It's estimated to be around 5,000 years old, about the same age as Stonehenge in the United Kingdom. So far, the purpose of this monument in Golan Heights is unknown although several theories have been put forward about its original significance. From what scientists have been able to determine so far, it appears to have some astrological significance. Some of the openings in the stone arrangement correspond with sunrises and sunsets during the June and December solstices, the shortest and longest days of the year, respectively. As with its significance, no one is really sure who built the monument. The most popular theory is that it was put together by a nomadic tribe passing through the area and settling there temporarily. However, it would have taken a great deal of energy and work to arrange the stones, as well as resources, something that a lone nomadic tribe might not have had access to. According to a 2021 report from Reuters, standing on the ground inside the complex, it looks like a labyrinth of crumbling stone walls overgrown with weeds. From on top of the five-metre-high burial mound, it is possible to make out a circular pattern. Only from the air does the impressive shape of a massive bullseye clearly emerge. Shards of ancient pottery, as well as flint tools and implements found nearby helped estimate the date of the monument's creation. Only time and further research will determine its true purpose and origins. Until then, the monument is used during military training exercises, although visitors are welcome to take a look at it and draw their own conclusions on weekends as well as holidays. Iridium confirms an asteroid wiped out the dinosaurs. 
Scientists studying this 200-kilometer crater believe that it could have been caused by an 11-kilometer asteroid plummeting to Earth, vaporizing rock, causing a decades-long winter, and wiping out over 75% of the era's dinosaur population. This iridium discovery appears to be one of the final pieces in a puzzle that scientists have been trying to put together for decades. Iridium is usually brought to Earth in asteroids, and it is incredibly rare to find it naturally occurring in the Earth's crust. Scientists believe that the asteroid of Chicxulub Crater contained large amounts of iridium, which were vaporized into Earth's atmosphere on impact, thus accounting for the high iridium content found in the KPG extinction sedimentary boundary. In the case of the crater, the iridium layer was so thick that scientists were able to date the iridium dust to almost 20 years after the impact, offering further proof that the crater was the original source of the Earth-altering impact. Additionally, there is archaeological evidence of massive tsunamis in the Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean during this frame time, as though some unspeakably massive collision caused waves radiating miles from the point of contact. Researchers also suggest that the depletion of sulfur in the sediment layer surrounding the impact zone indicates that the sulfur was thrown into the atmosphere by the force of the blast and further contributed to the long winter and acid rain that we know accompanied the KPG extinction. Iridium is not the only astrological element that is prevalent in the KPG sites. There are several other elements usually only found in asteroids that occur in incredibly large amounts that are reciprocated through KPG sediment cores taken from 52 sites around the world. Sean Gulick, who was one of the scientists president for the expedition to the Chicxulub crater, said that the discovery of the other rare elements both at the site of the impact and the concurrent sediment layers throughout the world have all but confirmed that the extinction of the dinosaurs was caused by an asteroid impact in the Gulf of Mexico. We are now at the level of coincidence that geologically does not happen without causation, he said. It puts to bed any doubts that the iridium anomaly is not related to the Chicxulub crater. The results of these conclusions have also been independently validated, proving that scientists are definitely moving in the right direction. But what do you make of these discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.